So with Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory out there and the story stuff out in the wild, it goes without saying, this video will contain spoilers on Melody of Memory's ending. So if you haven't finished the game or watched the cutscenes, you should definitely click off this video and go do that and then come back to this video. Also, this is probably going to be the last spoiler warning I have on Melody of Memory content. So in the ending of Melody of Memory, it was confirmed that Sora was in an alternate universe. As Riku and Kairi went to the final world to visit the Nameless Star that we can assume is the girl from the Varum Rex trailer, we know that Sora is likely trapped in a city that we know now is named Quadratum. And the next game or two, we'll likely see Riku as he goes to the other universe and tries to find Sora. But what interests me the most is something you guys have likely already heard a million times already, and that is when you translate Quadratum to Latin, it actually means square. Because you know Nomura loves him some Latin names. And when I got to thinking about what that could mean and if that could connect to something, I realized that it could actually be a clue to what kind of rules that this universe has and what the rest of the universe could look like outside of Quadratum. Because remember, that Quadratum is the name of the city, not the universe itself. Just like the Kingdom Hearts universe has Twilight Town or Skylad Kailum, we know that these worlds are based in a larger universe. Which brings me to the point of this video. Because we know that Kingdom Hearts is the bridge between Square Enix franchises. We've seen multiple Final Fantasy characters make appearances and even ones from different games. For example, we've seen Aerith, Tifa, Cloud, Sephiroth, and Yuffie from of course Final Fantasy VII, but also Squall and Cypher from Final Fantasy VIII, and even Tidus and Waka from Final Fantasy X. And then of course for other Square Enix franchises, we have The World Ends With You when we found Neku and the Gang in Dream Drop Distance. So throughout the series, we've seen Square Enix franchises treat Kingdom Hearts as sort of the bridge between Square Enix properties. And personally, since again, Quadratum literally translates to Square, I think that the next Kingdom Hearts games, or at least the games that are set in that universe, could be filled with more Square Enix properties and characters. But before we get into that, if you want to see more Kingdom Hearts and JRPG content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on. Also, if you know someone who would enjoy this or any of my other videos, go ahead and send it to them. We started growing this community and it would be amazing if we could have 1000 Guardians of Twilight in this community. I see you guys' theories and comments and it's honestly great to see all the people interacting with each other and talking about the things they enjoy and I'd love to see more of that. I think we could see it happen by this time next year but I'm gonna need your guys' help. One thing you can do after you've already subscribed is to share the video out with people and get it noticed by more people and leave a like and comment so it's noticed by YouTube. Also, if you want to talk with myself or other Kingdom Hearts fans, maybe send in some theories that can make it into a video, make sure you join the Guardians of Twilight Discord. Link will be down below in the description. So before Kingdom Hearts 3 moved into the more modern Disney era, Kingdom Hearts games had mostly Disney properties like Hercules, Mulan, and Lion King. Basically, the Disney worlds that have showed up in most Kingdom Hearts games before Kingdom Hearts 3 are movies that kids who grew up playing Kingdom Hearts 1 when it was new were also watching around that time. And now that we've moved on from those movies with the exception of a couple and even added Pixar into the mix, we're kind of due for a couple of new worlds. And I think it's important to remember that because we only got four Princesses of Light in KH3, we need three more and we're probably going to get those three from newer franchises. But how does that relate to Final Fantasy and the alternate reality introduced to Melody of Memory? Well, here's how. All the Final Fantasy characters we've seen thus far have all been from the OG PlayStation and PS2 era. We've seen a pretty good cast of Final Fantasy characters in Kingdom Hearts from Final Fantasy VI with characters like Setzer to Final Fantasy X-2 with the Gullwing Trio. And since we essentially saw Disney take that leap through time by bringing in more modern Disney movies to Kingdom Hearts 3, like with Frozen and Tangled, I think it's about time we see some new Final Fantasy or maybe even new Square Enix properties entirely in the next couple of Kingdom Hearts games. I think in the next couple of Kingdom Hearts games we might see some of the worlds that some of the original Final Fantasy characters came from. For example, they said in Twilight Town that Cypher, Fu, and Rai aren't there because they went on some warrior's journey, so that could hint to us getting a Final Fantasy VIII world in that new universe. And if we want to talk about newer games and not just newer worlds for characters you've already seen so far, we might actually get to see the worlds of Final Fantasy maybe 11 through 15. Since none of those characters or worlds have yet to be introduced in this universe, I think it might be likely that they're introduced in the other one. I'm not saying just to throw away all the Final Fantasy characters we've seen so far, but that this universe would hold the other side of Final Fantasy in the sense that there are newer franchises that haven't been explored in the regular Kingdom Hearts universe. And since there was a world of Final Fantasy Metal and Union Cross that had lightning on it, it wouldn't surprise me if that ends up connecting with some sort of Final Fantasy 13 or 13 2 world later on in the franchise. But also with the obvious connection between Yazora and Noctis from Versus 13, there are actually a couple ways I think that could play out. Honestly, I think that we could see some sort of pseudo Versus 13 world in the new universe. With Versus 13 becoming Final Fantasy 15, I think this would actually be the chance for Nomura to make the game that he actually wanted to make before leaving the project to work on Kingdom Hearts 3. 
Or we could actually go to the world of Final Fantasy XV and have to go along with Noctis, Prompto, Ignis, and Gladio through the world of Eos. I think that it'd be interesting to tie into the story of Kingdom Hearts, but also I feel like the world of Final Fantasy possibly being a part of this new universe, we could get a scene of Yuzora and Noctis meeting and get in that sort of Roxas meets Ventus moment as well, which I think would be pretty fun. I've seen some theories about who Yazora is in relation to Noctis, and I'll probably make some videos on it in the future, but part of me just wants to believe that, aside from Yazora being Nomura's revenge for Versus 13, that he actually has nothing to do with Noctis. But as we all know, this is Kingdom Hearts, and nothing is ever that simple. But the name Quadratum could actually mean something else. It could mean Square Enix is telling us that this universe contains not just Final Fantasy worlds, but other Square Enix properties as well like I discussed earlier. Just like we've seen the world ends with you in Dream Drop Distance, we could see Sora and the gang from the world ends with you in Shibuya as well, since Neku's final words to Sora in Dream Drop Distance are, see you in Shibuya. And when you couple that with the fact that Sora in the original Secret Ending to Kingdom Hearts 3 is Sora waking up in Shibuya, that could be where we see Sora in the next game. Or since Neo the World Ends With You got announced recently, we could see Sora meet up with the new characters like Rindo in this world as well. Personally, I think since the next major title for Kingdom Hearts started pre-production in November 2019, I think it's more likely that we'll see Neku and the gang make a comeback in a future title. Now, if this universe could be based on other Square Enix properties as a whole and not just Final Fantasy, this could be the time for Square Enix to branch out into other games and other franchises and sort of expand that Kingdom Hearts sphere of influence. Like if Kingdom Hearts still wanted to keep some of that fantasy element and keep some of the more lighthearted elements of the game for future titles, a game we could see in the future of Kingdom Hearts are actually games like Dragon Quest. It might seem kind of far-fetched because Dragon Quest isn't as popular in the West, but Dragon Quest is actually insanely popular in Japan, much more so than Kingdom Hearts. So it could be possible that we'll see Dragon Quest as the newest Square Enix rep in Kingdom Hearts. I think the world would fit well into what we know Kingdom Hearts as in the sense that you have this world of fantasy and magic that kind of matches the aesthetic of what Kingdom Hearts is. Even if they're not exactly one to one, I think Kingdom Hearts and Sora would fit well into that universe. Now games like Nier and Octopath Traveler I think are less likely to be included in Kingdom Hearts because Octopath, while it's a great game, it's held back because it's entirely in 2D. Which, even though we have the GBA chain of memories, I don't see Square Enix being the kind of company that's willing to try something like that. But I could be wrong, because we did get the classic Kingdom games in Kingdom Hearts 3 with the gummy phone stuff, so we know that they could do it, but personally, I don't see them doing it. And while Nier being a popular game and Nier Automata getting great reviews and being one of the more popular games on the last gen consoles, I also don't see Kingdom Hearts going into that realm because I don't think Disney would be willing to put characters like Donald and Goofy in a game with 2B simply because this game was also marketed to kids. And Disney was also pretty restrictive with Frozen and what Square could do with their characters in that world, so I can imagine we won't get Nier Automata as a world. It would kind of be like why Sakurai didn't put Mai from Fatal Fury into Smash because Smash is for good boys and girls. And if by some miracle that happens, I feel like we won't be seeing much of anything again like what happened in Frozen with Kingdom Hearts 3, which at that point would make me not want it in the first place. But personally, I think it'll definitely be nice to see what Square Enix properties show up in the next Kingdom Hearts games, if they show up, and how they'll impact the series. I'm sure we'll definitely see something new in the next major Kingdom Hearts game and I for one can't wait to see what the Square Enix team will deliver because I'm sure it will definitely be pretty interesting. But that's going to be all for now and if you liked the video make sure you leave a like and leave a comment help the video get shared by the YouTube algorithm and if you enjoyed the content make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. And if you know someone who would also enjoy this video go ahead and send it to them. My name is Moosewain1 and I will talk to you next time. Peace out.